Katie Pudliner, <coughs> mother of Tyler Pudliner. Thank you. Go ahead. Looking back over the last 358 days, some days are a complete blur, others are as vivid as yesterday. At 4.39 p.m. on 11-21-21, changed my life, my sons, my family, my friends, and the Waukesha community. During the closing arguments, the defendant spoke of family. His grandmother released her statement to the media speaking of family. Through the past 360, 300, 358 days, we have heard from the Brooks family that the defendant has a mental illness as a reason for his decisions that evening, except the decision making goes back further than that. It seems the decision was made not to get help, not to stay medicated, etc., and said to use it as an excuse for poor, selfish decisions. My family almost lost the only son, the only grandson, the only nephew, and that was not our decision. As a parent, I have carried the guilt that I debated with my son that he had to go to the parade that day. It was mandatory for his grade. The Packers were playing. It was cold and windy. I had to use a life teaching moment. He made a commitment to the band. This was all part of it. He, reluctant, he left reluctantly. I talked to him shortly after I found a parking spot downtown to make sure he was warm enough and told him the general area where I was going to look for a spot to watch the band perform. From 4.33 to 4.34 p.m., I watched the South Band march and perform in front of me. As I was packing up my blankets and chair into the wagon, I noticed what I thought was between a 2008 to 2012 maroon red Ford Escape driving extremely fast past me. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I remember making the mental notes about the vehicle, the driver, turned to a friend sitting with me and we were both in awe. Then we heard the screams and the sounds of things being hit, like when you bump into a construction barrel on the freeway. From 446 to 458 was complete chaos fighting the crowd of people running out of the area, screaming shots fired, trying to find my son. As I approached the intersection of Main Street and Barstow, the area went completely dark, maybe only in my mind, as I searched for my son, asking people if they knew where he was. A familiar voice behind me said, he's over here. I turned to see him laying in the street with his feet pointing north. First, enter your pin to unlock the device. Apologies. We had no idea what had happened, only that he was tasting blood and that his stomach hurt. Soon EMTs were there and we went for a run up and down Main Street as, as he was being helped before they had a true plan where they were gonna stage the injured. He was taken off the gurney and placed in the street to wait an ambulance. This is where we met our first hero of the journey. A complete stranger came to sit with us and help roll my son while he was vomiting blood from his injuries, helped to keep him calm and confront and comforted his fears. That was the 18 minutes that felt like an hour. I remember looking around as I waited. Not too far in front of me was a very young officer with his rifle standing guard. To my left were two brothers that we had known from the band and baseball. One lying on the street, clearly injured, the other standing by. I felt completely helpless as I wanted to, to go and help them. But I couldn't leave my son injured. They say everything happens for a reason, something I have firmly believed. At 5.16 p.m., we were loaded into the ambulance, as I refer to it as a little ambulance that could. While in the middle of everything, it had a coolant leak. The smell of antifreeze will trigger me forever. We made it out to Oconomowoc, Walk, and I learned after that it made another run after that before it died. While my son was whisked away to emergency surgery, I had to start making phone calls, returning text messages, figuring out what was next. While he made it through surgery, will he make it through surgery? How bad were his injuries? After six days at the hospital, we were sent home. My athletic son, <clears throat> 
couldn't lift, over, lift our cats, pour a glass of milk, put his socks and shoes on. He has a scar almost two foot long, and as a catcher, he questioned his ability to be able to play the sport he loves, the sport that he eats, breathes, and sleeps. After missing school and work for almost two months, we were able to start to get back and work up to a full-time basis over the course of a month. Yes. One ling lingering injury brought questions if he could play ball for what would be the first full season of his high school career. COVID had canceled and shortened the prior two. April 6th, he took to the field with that bandmate that was lying in the street just a few feet from us just three months earlier. As we tried to find the sense of normal in between doctor's appointments and procedures. Next one. Please. Through the process and the journey of the judicial system, we have found a new family, one that can relate to the horror, the fear, the trauma of that night, changing our lives forever. The criminal complaint had listed 62 named victims, now survivors, six to gain their wings. What it did not include were the 16 jurors that had also become victims of the defendant's actions that night, while the named victims, their families and friends had to relive that night they were experiencing firsthand. Mrs. Edwards' statement asked that we forgive her grandson blaming the mental illness not encouraging him to take ownership for his actions. She said that she lost a grandson, his mother lost a son, his children lost a father. That isn't completely a true statement, as they will be able to talk to him, send him letters, visit him, hopefully in a maximum security prison. They seem to forget there is a mother that can't kiss her son goodnight, a father that can't play ball with his son, a brother that can't fight with his brother and still be his best friend. There are three children that can't call their mother for advice, go shopping, plan their weddings, or have them watch over them as they reach for their dreams. There are numerous grandchildren that won't get to go to grandma's anymore, get spoiled and sent home, hyped on sugar and love. There are teenagers that had to grow up way too quickly, having to make adult decisions about their future. There are girls that may never dance again without fear, their innocence taken away by a selfish decision. There is a grandfather that cannot tell the family stories anymore. He can't watch his wife dance. These families will forever be missing their loved ones. They can't call them, write a letter, or visit them. Nothing will bring back the son, the mom, the daughter, the grand Ma and the grandfather to these families, nothing can restore the innocence lost to these to ease their fear. But this community came together to lift up each other up, support each other, looked after those that were in their worst moments, celebrated the wins along the way, returning to the dance floor, dancing in the streets, and playing baseball. The prosecution team did an amazing job representing everyone. Of the, of the plaintiffs in this case, thank you. The victim witness team was so caring and diligent in keeping us informed. Being whenever there was a question that came up. Pepper, who greeted us every time we came to the courthouse, she put a smile on everyone's face, brought a little humor or a caring snuggle. You can do the last one, Tom. Your Honor, you are the standard that should be set across the country. Your patience, your diligence will never be forgotten. From the self act selfish actions of one person came to a community, came from a, excuse me, from one's selfish actions of one person came a community rising like a phoenix, stronger than ever, stronger together. I ask that you hand on the maximum possible sentence without parole in prison so that everyone in our Waukesha strong community can heal, remember, grow, and never have to look back.
It's a separate PowerPoint. It's yeah, if you just oh, here's Chris. Oh. I'm Tyler Pudliner, uh, victim O. Your Honor, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today and share my impact statement with the court. It has been a long time coming, but I cannot thank the courts enough for giving not only myself, but all of us who have been affected the opportunity to share our stories. First, I would like to start off with you, Judge Doro. Thank you, Your Honor. We have all been going through these proceedings for almost a year now, and it is almost hard to believe that this is the first time that we've gotten the opportunity to communicate with you directly. I understand now that this is how the process takes place. Now, since the beginning of these proceedings, I've obviously gone through a lot of emotions as having been a victim and survivor in this case. I hate to say it like this, but it seems that, that for a greater portion of the year, and especially throughout the most recent proceedings, and my mother can confirm this, I've been somewhat angry towards you, Judge Doro. And I would now like to apologize for that. Maybe it's because I either did not understand or did not want to become aware of how lengthy the process was. There have been multiple occasions where I have gotten very mad or annoyed due to your rulings that either didn't go the prosecution's way or that I personally felt shouldn't have been made. Obviously, there are also multiple occasions where these disruptions that would continuously be, continuously be made by the defendant would take up way too much time and cause way too many delays throughout the trial portion of these proceedings. It would stress all of us out more than we should have ever been, to say the least. I would keep asking my mother, other families involved, the prosecution, and wit victim witness teams, why can't Judge Duro do more to stop the disruptions? Why did she let that one testimony go on for way longer than it should have? But in all thanks to those amazing people sitting behind me, I was able to get the clarification and understanding that I need to calm down and help me understand that we were making steps forward in the process. And I wanted, and that we were going to finally arrive at the finish line as winners. That's why I wanted to start off by thanking you first today, Judge Doro. I am very glad that we have finally arrived at this point in the process where I can say that you did an amazing job throughout the entire process. You have not only shown myself or just the court, but an entire nation and world um, for, that, for that matter, that you conducted these proceedings with the utmost respect and decorum to all of the parties involved. Lastly, Your Honor, I want to acknowledge your sainthood. Your devotion to this trial can never be matched. Your fair rulings, passion for this case, and kindness to everyone is more than everyone could have asked for, and for that, I again thank you. You have truly become like a mother and a true hero to this community, and, that we, and for that, we appreciate you, Judge Doro. I would also like to thank this amazing prosecution team, Sue, Leslie, Zach, Tom, Christy, and Ryan. You guys have been the glue that has held us together throughout this entire process over the past year. You've all taken extra time out of your day to stay late and either be able to answer all of our questions or just talk and reassure us that even though with all those sleepless nights and countless hours of delay, we would be okay. I can confidently say that I don't think there could have been a better team put together to represent us as the plaintiffs in this matter. Just like Judge Doro, all of you have shown the passion, blood, sweat, and tears and extraordinary effort that has been poured into this case to give us the justice that many have desired and deserve. Consider yourselves true heroes to this community as well. I would also like to highlight Jen and her extraordinary team at Victim Witness Assistance. Again, a group of truly amazing people that I can't say enough words about to describe their amazing work. If we needed a shoulder to cry on, they were there. If we needed to make that late night phone call to get the answers we desired, they answered. We can truly not thank you guys enough for all your hard work and unmeasurable amount of effort that you gave us during this case to our families. And you cannot forget about personally my favorite employee in the entire courthouse, Pepper. You know how they say a dog is a man's best friend. Well, Pepper is an entire community's best friend. I personally, and I'm sure that I could speak for all of us when I say this, could not be more thankful for all the donations that have been made, or have made Pepper possible. Jen and her staff have done an amazing job keeping her in line while she did what any dog does best. Gives us so much unconditional love that for a split second, you feel like all the problems are gone. Once again, I cannot thank everyone who represented us as the state of Wisconsin. You guys did one hell of a job throughout this process and have truly become a special part of this group. Um, finally, I want to take the time to describe how the events that occurred on November 21st, 2021 have affected my family and myself. No one thinks um, that something like those horrendous acts committed by the defendant on 11-2021 will ever happen to you. Christy, if you could please. 
I want you to look at that, Mr. Brooks. That's what you did to me that night. That's us in the ER, waiting. I remember bits and pieces, but that is what happened. If you could go on to the next slide, please, Christy. Throughout the past year, I have become very close to other families involved in this matter. All the pictures there have what kept me going, the sport of baseball and all the other families affected in that community. I've gained more little brothers than I can say and an entire new baseball team to live out the, the rest of this life with. Next slide, please. I've also met so many new friends post 11, 2021. A new grandmother to add to such a wonderful family, a new, another new brother in that instance that have just helped me get through everything. And it's kept us stronger through the whole process. Next slide, please, Christy. I've also gotten to become closer to other groups that were affected. Last Saturday, I marched with the Milwaukee Dancing Grannies in their Christmas parade. Veterans Day. Uh, Veterans Day parade, yeah, my bad, <laughs> sorry. Um, coming together with other groups like this is something that has, again, shown that we are very strong. We are stronger than the defendant, and we are an entire community that has shown that strength. These memories are what have kept us going and will forever keep us going in this process. Next slide, please, Christy. As I stated before, um, baseball is a sport that has specifically kept me going. Wrestling is another love. I've gotten to meet some very cool wrestlers, uh, Braun Strowman to name a few, or, and Ric Flair. Um, a race car driver, a local race car driver that I pit for at Slinger Speedway has basically been another grandfather throughout this entire process. He spent every day with us at the hospital for the week I was hospitalized, except Thanksgiving. Um, I've gained another brother who's pictured there at that wrestling event with another part of my truly amazing and big family that I've gained out of this. Christian Yelich, a brewer, and my favorite player and now manager of the Brewers Craig Council. You go to the next slide, please. Finally, this right here, this is me and my buddy Eric. We were both affected that day and we made the return within three months of everything happening to come back and play the sport that we love. We did not stay down, we did not cry, you know, didn't let it get to us. We came back stronger than ever. Yeah, we might have lost, but we played hard and truly showed this entire community that we are stronger together and we are stronger than you. I just want to uh, also address one more thing to Mr. Brooks. These are um, two quotes that have gotten me through this entire process. You can mark it down in your Bible if you want for this one. It's Romans 12, 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The second one, also to go with his grandmother's statement. I picked it up from the book and movie, The Shack, written by William P. Young. The quote is, Forgiveness in no way requires that you trust the one you forgive. Forgiveness is not about forgetting. It is about letting go of another person's throat. And I do want to acknowledge that I am letting go of your throat, Mr. Brooks but I have not forgiven you. Thank you, for your, thank you, Your Honor, for the chance to speak today. Thank you to both of you.